My mother had desperately wanted to be a doctor. Her father was professor of surgery at Trinity College Dublin, and he said there shouldn't be women doctors and she couldn't be one. But she found another route to helping children. She started a nursery group and the children sat at a long trestle table. Children began to emerge who had problems. And our GP at the time asked my mother whether she would consider taking on several children who had very significant traumatic disturbances. Because there were children arriving from all over the place who'd had the most dreadful times. Their families had been split up, their parents had been killed, their siblings had disappeared. There was a tremendously strong need to find a way of helping these children, but also of helping the grown-ups who had to look after them. I guess, like a lot of post-war kids, I had been evacuated in the war. Arriving back at home was pretty difficult. Mum was very tough on me, pushed me around a bit. I think I must have been about 10 when the neighbour, the next-door neighbour, complained to either police or social services or somebody about what was happening to me and the next thing I knew I was at the bush. It was a pretty small establishment with a very small team of staff and the person that stood out was Mrs Docker Drysdale. Mrs Doherty, as we called her, was in our lives every day. Amazing, amazing woman. Um, highly um, tolerant of this bunch of kids that were pretty I mean, one of the kids painted one of the ducks bright red and uh, we all thought this was hilarious, but I mean, it wasn't in the least bit hilarious. Uh, and she picks up this duck uh, and talks to us about it and says to us, would you like to be painted another colour? And we thought, no, not really. So why paint a duck another colour? And we thought, yeah, that's, that's, you know, we shouldn't paint that duck. Uh, and so the ducks never got painted again. This was the sort of person she was. She contrasted the way she looked at things with the more general view that children were to behave, they were to be good, they were to be seen and not heard, they would be punished if they didn't behave themselves, including corporal punishment, and that many of these children had no element of understanding about their behaviour at all, and the adults who cared for them didn't understand it. My mother decided that she wanted to become a qualified psychotherapist and she needed training. So she worked at the Maudsley Hospital in London. She worked at the Tavistock Institute of Human Relations in London. Her therapeutic approach was based on Freud's work. There was a growing recognition that there was a need for those problem children to be helped rather than just punished and ending up in prisons, which is what was happening. She was so tolerant of us kids screaming around the place and uh, sort of saying, no, I'm not going to, I don't want my tea. You can keep your tea, I don't want my tea. And she'd say, well, you're going to get hungry, so let me know when you get hungry. And just took it like norm. But it wasn't, of course. In those days, every child had a bottle of milk at 11 o'clock every single child. So we all used to go out under the mulberry tree and have our milk under the mulberry tree. And we decided to call it the mulberry bush. We had a, a cook housekeeper and a team of domestic help, qualified teachers, psychiatric nurse from the Maudsley Hospital. One important person was Portia Holman and she ran a big child guidance clinic in London. And a lot of children were referred from that clinic they needed a residential therapeutic context. The thing that was different about the Mulberry Bush um, from the very beginning was the fact that it worked with very young children. My mother recognised that the earlier that you could intervene when real problems were developing, the more likely you were to be able to deal with the actual problem at the time it was happening. And so she decided that the Mulberry Bush should have children from the age of sort of six-ish on till ten-ish. It became really almost the only place that offered therapy and education to children of that age group. She was an amazing woman, just amazing. And obviously looking back, keeping 
the team together and the kids together and, and working through with us. She, she stood out a mile, an absolute mile. A lot of what she was doing was revolutionary. Um, and I think there were people probably who um, were absolutely full of disbelief that anybody could behave in such a preposterous way with children who should be controlled and managed, you know. But she did have a, a real insight into the needs of the internal world of the child, not just the external one.